All right, guys, this is it, your first lesson. Now we're going to start off with a little review of the weathering and uh, erosion topic before we get on to other things. We're going to be doing these like five minute mini lessons, which hopefully will be uploaded to YouTube as well. We're going to see about that, but we'll keep you posted. Anyways, you see that guy? That's me. And I am in the ground, in the ground in Florida, along a place called Blowing Rocks Nature Preserve. And all this rock from the water, from rain and the ocean coming in, all rainwater, all ocean water is slightly acidic because it mixes with pollution in the air and also decayed vegetation in the ground. And it forms like this carbonic acid is dissolving this limestone rock. Is that physical or chemical weather? You know it, it's chemical because it's dissolving, it's changing the chemistry. So once again, a little review from what Ms. Van Oss went over with you guys. Two different forms of weathering, both physical and chemical. Here's a great example of physical. This is from Custer Park, South Dakota. In Custer Park, South Dakota, those are pieces of granite spiking out of the ground. Now here's the deal with granite. Granite doesn't dissolve. I can, on a granite countertop, like in a kitchen or something, I can pour acid right on it. It's not going anywhere, unlike limestone that reacts because limestone is made up of the mineral calcite. And on page 16 of your reference table, it tells you that calcite dissolves in acid. So if I had a limestone countertop in my kitchen, it would dissolve if I got acid on it, okay? Or a really powerful vinegar. But that's not gonna happen with granite. That's not gonna happen with granite. These are, this is granite. So what, was, what happened here? What happened here is this was a giant dome of magma that protruded out of the ground. And then what happened is over millennia of time, that means lots of time, you got a little crack in the rock. And you know what got in there since this is South Dakota? Some water. And you know what water does during the winter in South Dakota? It freezes because it gets stinking cold. And then it could like get above freezing where it turns into water. And then it gets cold again and more water gets into the crack, gets bigger and expands on average about 9% and blows it out. This is called frost wedging. And it happens again and again. And pretty soon it happens so much that that part of the rock, actually at the top, is no longer there. I know that was very sanitary of me to lick my finger in this time of what we're gonna do, you know? It's good tally, never gonna change. So. Here's the deal, look at this. These things look like spikes sticking out of the ground because all that rock here is gone, not because it got dissolved, because it got cracked and carried away. Physical or chemical? That's right, it's physical. Physical, did the rock change? No, when we have chemical weathering, the rock changes. So what we have is physical changes where the rock breaks down, that's physical weathering, tree root up, uplifts a sidewalk, something like that, that's physical. A rock sitting there in the sun in the middle of Arizona, and it just, it cracks, and it actually breaks off into like sheets or layers. That's called sheeting or exfoliation, like the, like the peeling of an onion, or you get some like cosmetic creams that have like a rough grit, and you take the surface layer off your skin to bring out the good stuff underneath. Okay, that's called exfoliants. So exfoliation, it's physical. Um, the cracking of rock due to expansion. This stuff right here, where water gets inside and expands and cracks the rock, again, physical. However, cave formation or solution beach formation, a beach beneath the beach, you guys gotta go there. It's in Jupiter Island in Florida, just north of West Palm. That's chemical weathering. So what happens with physical and chemical weathering is they break up rock. And as they break up this rock, they make it so that critters can get inside the top layer of the rock. And those critters, and that's a nice sound right there because class just ended, sports fans. Okay, but anyways, it's going to get another bell in about four more minutes to say it began. And uh, what happens is these critters get in, and then they leave their bodies laying around as they die. They leave their feces laying around because that's what they do and they start to break up this top layer of the ground, which was originally all rock. And due to these weathering processes and weathering and biological activity, that's potato bugs and worms and stuff, weathering and biological activity, those two things produce this. 
they produce, look at that, they produce soil. Okay, so soil starts off at just a bunch of broken up rocks. We call that the sea horizon. I know we don't go in order of the alphabet here because A really doesn't happen yet. Okay, so we're starting with C. And a horizon is like a layer. And then what starts to happen is you do, do start to get an A horizon. You do start to get the crispy critter zone, the feces and the bodies and everything else. And that's the biologic activity that's going on in that area. So now you start to get what we call soil. In fact, some people might even call it top soil. In science, though, we got a better word for it. It means decayed vegetative area. We call it humus. Humus. Not to be confused with hummus, because you would never put humus on your crackers. Don't do it. So here we have A horizon and C horizon. Now, now you get to stuff like we have in Western New York, where you have the C horizon, which is broken up rock, the A horizon, and now what's happened is all the minerals and nutrients in the A horizon have been sucked out into the most broken down piece of a strata that you can get. The smallest sediments of all, page six, upper right hand corner, earth science reference table, called clay. Each piece less than 0 .0 zero, four centimeters in diameter. In other words, you can't see individual pieces. So since we can't see the individual pieces, it just looks like a big a hunk of hunk of in the ground. And usually it's brown. Why is it usually brown? Well, if you take all the crayons in the crayon box and you mix them all together, the blue, the red, the pink, the orange, everything else together, you're going to get brown. That's what it's going to look like. Just like when we eat our foods. We eat all different kinds of foods. Typically, the end result is brown. You know what I'm talking about. Unless you just eat leafy greens all the time, it might not be brown when it comes out. Anyways, it turns out usually brown. And that's called the B horizon. And it's got all the nutrients sucked out. They're called leached out, sucked out, like leeches suck on skin. Sorry, I'm drooling. And that forms clay. So we got the humus topsoil weathering and biologic activity we got the clay and we got the broken bedrock and then we have down here where fred and barney live and that's called bedrock and that hasn't been disturbed yet you have a lot of biologic activity and weathering you got a lot of soil so that's a brief synopsis of weathering two forms physical chemical and result soil you have to wait for the next unit